Hi, Shabbat Shalom. In a really difficult world, we go about our business trying to ignore some of the uh, threats that we feel and the dangers that exist all around us. This is certainly true for us as a Jewish people right now, but it's, it's true for the entire world in many different ways. We know that when we look towards that which is normal, to the, that which happens every day, it helps relieve some of the stress and allows us to focus on other things. Sometimes, though, there are calamities that happen, as we know. There are tremendous uh, ruptures in the world, and then we have to be able to come back from those things. I've noted that after October 7th in, from Israel, there was an incredible amount of beauty that came, as we saw this past week, in the form of poetry, in the form of music, and even in the form of humor. There's a sense of optimism in the spirit, and yet the danger is re remain. There's a, a tremendous threat that lies in front of us that we're reading about just today from Iran. Uh, in the Torah reading this week, Parshat uh, Tazria, we see some laws about uh, how a woman is to respond after having given birth. Really arcane laws and something that in many ways feels bothersome because of this notion of ritual impurity. And yet in some of the commentaries, there's a very interesting a discussion about it that talks about the following. It talks about how the world of a woman, the world of a family, changes so dramatically after the birth of a child. In the birth of a child, any child is not a simple process by any means. Going through pregnancy and delivering can be really, really hard. And then there's a new life, and then there's new hope. The rabbi said that there are times when a woman after delivering birth feels like she is a creator. And so the giving of the offering is to say, this gift is not just something that I produced, but this gift is part of the universe, part of the world of nature. This is a gift from God. And so the perspective on that changes and changes dramatically. Soon we will be celebrating Passover, and this Passover, like every other Passover, is not like any Passover that came before. This night will be different from all other nights. And part of our job on Passover is not just to reflect on the tragedies of the past year, but part of our job is also to create a sense of sweetness, a sense of beauty, a sense of fun for ourselves and for our children. Recently, we read about a Haggadah that was, that was published by Kibbutz Be'eri. You may know that Kibbutz Be'eri is one of the kibbutzim close to the Gaza border that suffered so terribly. It's also the place where Israel's largest publishing house resides. And so shortly uh, after the war and before Pesach, they published a Haggadah. It's a Haggadah that has beautiful art in it. It's art that reflects uh, the, the work of special needs kids from that entire area. This is the Haggadah. It's entitled Drawing Together, Alut and the Children of the Otel Gaza Communities Put It Together. I ordered 150 of them, and the reason I did so is because I want you to have the opportunity to buy one. Just as a memento, you can write in this before your Seder with some of your thoughts and leave them for your grandchildren as to what this Passover was all about for the Jewish people. But by buying the Haggadah also, you are supporting Kibbutz Be'eri that needs our support, as does the entire region, all the kibbutzim in the south and all the villages in the south, as well as the entire uh, people of Israel. So I wish you Shabbat Shalom. I know that we have the capacity to transform pain into joy, to create sweetness out of bitterness, and I hope that we're able to do that and do that well. Good Shabbos, everybody.